Oh my God, this is so embarrassing. I just ended up buying, I bought, I bought tickets for the wrong theater while I was totally high. <laughs> oh, don't tell anybody this happened. We're gonna do this next week, okay guys? We're gonna do this next week, I promise you. So today I have absolutely no idea what to expect. Like, I've been trying to keep away from any spoilers of this movie whatsoever. I'm checking single review. Once I saw a small trailer on the CW, even though I did not want to while I was watching Riverdale, mind you. Um, I just saw Kristen Stewart has a shaved head. And that this movie was originally made in 2017, and I don't know why it's coming out now and didn't come earlier. And I'm actually looking forward to this, like a nice old little space creature feature. So let's see what happens. The world's oceans are largely unexplored, but thanks to scientists, explorers, treasure hunters, and wealthy investors, we are finding new things every day. Oh my god, talk about mixed bag on this one. Um, this was not good, but this was also not bad either. There's so many things about this movie that I really, really loved. And so many things that I truly, truly, downright despised. So, there is really a lot to talk about here. Um, let me process a little. I think we're gonna talk about this at home. Cut to there. Okay, I'm gonna, first of all, I'm gonna start talking about the positives of this, of this movie. And this is actually, I'm doing something very dangerous because my sister's in the background who truly hated this movie. And she's gonna hate everything positive I have to say about it. Okay, let's get this going. So. With that being said, you can toss in any objections if you want to, by the way. Um, the best thing about this movie is Kirsten Stewart's performance. Definitely. Like, hands down, that is, like, the best thing ever here. And, like, you can really totally see anybody who is stuck in their stupid little twilight box. I recommend you to just see this movie alone for Kirsten Stewart's performance because this just simply shows what kind of an amazing actress she has become during the recent years. Because, like, if anything is carrying this movie, that is her fucking performance. And she is doing an amazing job here. Um, other performances that I have to give credit for. There's two performances I also really enjoyed. Jessica Henrich and Vincent Cassell. Good job, guys. Like, they were the only ones besides Kirsten Stewart who were carrying this movie. Everybody else was just so plain and generic and forgettable. But I'm going to talk about that later. And what I also noticed about this movie, it is, it, it seems to have taken, like, a lot of inspirations from the big greats. Like, movies like The Thing, Alien, maybe even Event Horizon a little bit. And you get a lot of nods to those films in this movie. Like, especially if there is one scene where the monster in this movie is like really facing Kristen Stewart's character. And it honestly reminds you of that iconic scene in Alien where Ripley is like right in front of the alien and pretending not to move. It's like really giving nods to films like that. And but, but but there is not much monster in this movie. If you expect this to be a monster movie, it's not. It is not. It is definitely not. I'm going to get to that later. What else I really liked here is the cinematography. Oh, I can be beautiful. If you enjoy explosions, especially explosions in water, which are very hard to make look good, this is good. This is, like, really good. Like, the way these explosions are designed, generally the way the action sequences of the movie are made, beautiful. Like, actually, a remarkable job. The monster in this movie also looks fantastic because it doesn't look CGI-ish at all. It's actually, like, 
a quite believable monster. You, you, you actually feel like the monster is actually there. You don't get that Marvel look where everything looks absolutely synthetic. And those are basically like the good parts of the movie that the movie has to offer. It has an incredible opening, a very impressive ending, but then we get to the middle. And now let's talk about the things that were not so good about this movie. Except for Kirsten Stewart's character and Jessica Henwick's character, you don't really give a shit about anybody. And that is the problem. Because this movie really, really, really wants you to care about its characters. But you don't. You're, you're just being thrown into a situation. You don't get a backstory about anyone. You don't really... Not even about the situation. Yeah, not yeah, not. Story about the situation. Not even how long they've been underwater. It's just like why they're underwater. It, it, what their general situation is. There's there just no, there is no general situation. They're just at a drill station, but like what's going on? How they've been doing? And, what? Oh, yeah. Nothing. And, 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 and you still need a moment to get that it's a drill station. We even need a moment for that. Except for Kirsten Stewart and Vanessa's character. There isn't any character development at all, really, here. No. Like, nothing. And, um, sort of, the problem, the basic problem with the movie is it gets, it's redundant. It gets very redundant. Totally. See, totally. what the movie manages to do great is that it sets tone very well. It sets its tone perfectly. But that is also where the movie kind of kills itself because the tone is just so specific. And... It just doesn't leave this tone that you get very bored very quickly. You're basically watching this scenario. Our aquatic friends are chilling. There's an explosion and everything goes awry. And then they chill again. And then there's an explosion and everything goes awry. And then they chill again and... It's redundant. It keeps happening over and over again. And that is basically 90 minutes of they hang out, surviving, fighting the good fight. And then there's an explosion and everything goes awry. It's, uh, it gets boring very fast. And it's like, you feel bad for this movie because it deserves so much more. There's great effects. There's, you know, the sea creature looks amazing. But it's redundancy and it's lack of character just yeah, lets you down. And, 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 and the sea creature that doesn't really matter, who's there like for like all five seconds of the movie and does not have anything to do with the storyline, all of a sudden there's a sea creature. Nobody battles it, really. Like, it's just yeah. there. Like, all of a sudden there's a sea creature. Let's look at it for like five fucking seconds. Yeah, that's the thing. I want this threat underwater to be more of a threat. I know you're trying, I know you, they were trying to go for the humanity in this. Trying to make the story be a story about survival. And less about the creature that is actually attacking our characters. But! There was all five seconds You can't creature. make a character study without any character. So like, why not focus on the creature? Something that irritated me so much in this movie. And like, it's so s silly because... I was just talking about how amazing the effects were. But the makeup, oh my god. There is this scar Kirsten Stewart has on her cheek that looks like somebody took like a magic marker and just draw a, drew a line on her face. And that doesn't change. It remains the same through the entire movie. So yeah, you get like, I feel very extreme about this movie. There's a lot of things about it I love, but there's a lot of things about it I hate. It's not good. It's not a disaster either. I say, watch it on VOD, on Netflix, or on like any streaming service when it's available, but don't waste your money on it. It's okay, but the bad kind of.